Greetings, members one and all of the Salvation Nation. Panic in the markets as the Dow Jones loses almost 8% of value today, down 2,000 points, and gold is hanging on to some highs, and the gold to silver ratio is reaching new record levels. Let's explore! Yes, I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to title this video because there's so many headlines that have uh, that are taking place here. So much to really explore through this. But let's start with this article from Kitco, Jim Wyckoff, uh, that summarizes kind of where uh, gold is and silver to a point. Gold's a bit lower, but it's caught in the vortex of sell what you can. Uh, Gold prices at midday are modestly lower in choppy and sometimes volatile U.S. futures trading Monday after hitting a seven-year high above $1,700 overnight. We covered that on my uh, Market Watch live stream on Sunday, and uh, we saw some of that activity. And overnight as well, the gold-to-silver ratio surpassed 100 to 1. That's 100 ounces of silver to buy one ounce of gold. Risk aversion is very high to start the trading week. Global stock markets are melting down, while currency and commodity markets are in turmoil. Many traders of multiple markets were probably blindsided by the mammoth price moves in many markets Monday, even though the futures markets pretty much predicted this, prompting them to deleverage and forcing them to sell markets that they could, they, they could including gold and silver. This is an old trading adage. Uh, that during keen market turmoil and high anxiety, when traders can't sell what they want, they sell what they can. April gold futures were last down $4.20 to $1,667.80. May COMEX silver prices were last down uh, about $0.35 cents at $16.90 an ounce. Global stock, commodity, and financial markets were jolted overnight following the surprise weekend news that Saudi Arabia said it would drastically lower its crude oil prices and pump more crude oil following a failed OPEC meeting in which Russia refused to lower its crude production. And IMEX crude prices, oil prices fell to a four-year low of $27.34 a barrel overnight before coming well off those lows, but still trading down nearly $8 a barrel at around $33.50. The one-day loss in crude oil prices is the biggest in almost 30 years, dating back to the 1991 first Gulf War. 1991 is another interesting year that we will explore in the silver to gold ratio because that's the last time it went over 100 to 1. You know, uh, I heard that, that they're going to maximize production in Saudi Arabia too in this fight against Russia, this economic battle. Global stock markets sold off sharply overnight, and the U.S. stock market index futures are sharply lower at midday. At one point in morning trading, the Dow Jones Industrial Average was down over 2,000 points. It is again. The U.S. stock indexes were off their daily lows midday. In fact, just after opening, the, uh, the markets were shut down. Uh, they paused for a while. It's crazy. Um, the, the benchmark 10-year U.S. Treasury note saw its yield dive to a record low of 0.387% overnight. And it's currently trading around 0.5%. The U.S. 30-year Treasury bonds yield dropped below 1% overnight. The U.S. Treasury bond futures overnight at one point saw prices trade over 13 points higher. For perspective, a one-point move in T-bond prices is normally considered a big move. The U.S. dollar index is trading sharply lower and hit a 13th month low on Monday. The Japanese yen has soared on the foreign exchange market, while the Australian dollar plunged in value. Uh, the Saudi-Russia oil price war is a second shock to hit the global marketplace this year as traders and investors are still dealing with the high anxiety of the uh, Cer Mexican Cerveza sickness. And it continues to spread. Reports over the weekend said half of Italy is on lockdown, while more cases and deaths have been reported in the U.S. 
say that New York has declared a state of emergency because of the outbreak. Business events in the U.S. are now being canceled, and some companies have banned employed travel on airlines. All this has an effect on the economy. And, of course, with uh, I even heard in my live stream, somebody was saying that uh, schools and um, events are being shut down in Saudi Arabia. And, by the way, it was there that we I first learned about Saudi Arabia um, increasing production and lowering prices there in that live stream last night. Pretty, pretty amazing. The research of the viewers is is uh, unprecedented, I think. More and more, it appears the global economy is spiraling into a recession and a bear market in equities. Young investors have never experienced a bear market in stocks, which will especially unnerve them. How will they react psychologically? That's the thing about the markets. It is very psychological. This generation may react differently than the prior generations. More for the major market, uh, major central banks to take more action, possibly as soon as Monday, to try to mitigate the collapsing stock markets and Assange. Very shaky consumer confidence. The silver market is getting hit harder Monday, along with many other raw commodity markets, amid the collapse in crude oil prices and notions of global economic recession crimping industrial demand for silver. And there's your first uh, hint of why we're seeing the gold to silver ratio. Um, uh, increase. The specter of consumer and commercial price deflation is also curtailing buying interest in precious metal markets. Technically, April gold prices were near the session low at midday today. The bulls have the solid overall near technical advantage and more upside is likely in the near term. Choppy four-month-old uh, price uptrend is in place for the daily bar chart. Gold's bulls Next uh, near-term price breakout objective is to produce a close above the solid technical resistance at today's high of 1704.30. Wow. And we won't go through the other technical uh, points here, which I think are certainly interesting and keen. But let's talk about this gold to silver ratio thing here. This is an Indian source from businessstandard.com. Gold to silver ratio tests three-decade high. Eyes 1991 level of 100. In fact, this article was written, um, I guess they didn't realize that it actually did go above uh, 100. Uh, and it says here, the gold to silver ratio, uh, which indicates the relative strength of the two metals, is testing the three-decade high level of 100, seen in February of 1991. Currently, the ratio is at 96.5, and actually it's higher than that now. The ratio of gold to silver, as of the recording of this video, is 98.53, up 2.2% um, on the day there. The ratio rises when silver underperforms gold. In the past, whenever the ratio has increased to a very high level, it has never sustained and fallen. The ratio shows how many ounces of silver can be bought with one ounce of gold. Traders in India, like, other global, like their global peers, trade on the basis of the ratio. If they expect the ratio to rise, they buy gold and sell silver. The gold-silver ratio is currently, well, at 98.5. It has seen a jump of about 19% in the past six months. More than that now, 20%. Gold prices have, have also jumped in this period and moder moderated thereafter. This shows that the market's clear preference for gold, A.J. Kedia, director of Kedia Commodities, said. Globally, Gold demand has been rising in the past six months as central banks have been buying gold. And that makes sense. More so, I think, in many ways than ever. Gold prices also got supported from the U.S.-China trade war, U.S. Middle East geopolitical tensions, and the rapid spread of the Mexican cerveza sickness. Traders are still buying gold as a safe haven in these uncertain market conditions. Silver remains stable compared to gold as industrial demand is poor. The gold to silver ratio can reach the 1991 levels of 100. In fact, it did today, earlier today. And we'll find out uh, more of what I've been talking about later in this article uh, is confirms kind of what I've been theorizing for a while. Traders have been saying that the ratio will not sustain at high levels and silver will start out outperforming gold. This is possible if gold falls faster than silver or if silver rises faster than gold. Well, that's the Captain Obvious statement of the, of the decade. However, they are now refraining from commenting 
as silver still doesn't look strong following weaknesses in base metals. This is important as over 55% of the silver demand comes from industry. That's right, exactly. And that is how what I've been saying here for a while, that silver is being viewed in these markets more and more as a commodity. However, in 1991, just coming out of a recession, that is what happened as well. I think silver's um, uh, or coming into a recession or, you know, or the 1990 recession, so the the demand for silver decreased, and hence the price went down. That was the that was the view of it as a commodity. So really, it's nothing new. It's just a different age. There's a more versatile uses for silver. And so um, I think that gives, goes to show us that, yes, some of the um, speculative or the, what the view on silver has changed in some ways among the markets. Really, it hasn't as well. Maybe more and more people are realizing it has, has been for a while and even in times of uh, not so much economic uncertainty, but um, during that time, and that is what's led to an increasing ratio in uh, widening, which is why we may not see it go back down unless something crazy happens. There are reasons for gold to rise further or outperform silver. Metal Focus and London-based consultancy said in its latest report on gold that apart from the spreading Sickness causing damage to newer areas and the Federal Reserve sharply cutting interest rates, not to mention the repo, the repurchase agreements between central banks that the Federal Reserve have been injecting and pumping in. The impact of political turmoil and geopolitical tensions also provide positive for the metal. Among the various problems, some of the standout include uncertainties ahead of the U.S. presidential election as well as Brexit and ongoing tensions across the Middle East. While projecting further rise for gold, the consultancy said, we're also skeptical that fiscal monetary stimuli introduced by policymakers will be sufficient to rescue the global economy. And there's a there is foreshadowing because look what happened with the um, with the half point interest rate cut really didn't do a darn thing to help the economy, although. As I heard in the news today, President Trump is going to try to meet with Wall Street, try to discuss option ways to save off and, and maybe even provide some economic sti some e some stimulus, which could mean that we have uh, quantitative easing for. I hope not, but boy, that might be something they may try. Um, we also, oh, so let's see, prior to the virus, not only had nominal interest rates been kept at historically low levels across key reserve currencies, central banks' balance sheets have also ballooned since 2008. As a result, despite some near-term market relief, the boost from additional rate cuts and our monetary easing on the underlying economy should be limited. On the other side, silver prices are not showing signs of any trustworthy improvement. This is important here indicating that the gold and silver ratio in the near term will rise further and silver will underperform gold. During January and February 2020, the combined Silver Eagle uh, coins sales totaled just 4.5 million ounces compared with 6.18 million ounces over the same period in 2019. This indicates that the sale of silver coins is weak. That's very important and key here in this. A key challenge concerns the trend in the silver price, which was largely rain-bound over the, over the first five to six weeks of the calendar year. From an investor standpoint, the price performance was quite unattractive, especially in the light of the rally in gold. To some extent, according to an analyst with the global research firm, this reflected disillusionment with silver's price prospects, the concerns that it will suffer as global growth concerns deepen. That's something I've seen here in this community by some doubters of silver, for sure. And it's understandable. But here is the key to all of this. He expects silver prices to recover when U.S. silver coin and bar demand improved. This, in turn, should lead to an upside break out in silver prices, which in turn will encourage retail buying on two counts. First, some of the gold buying of institutional investors will move to silver. Second, as positive price expectations emerge, some retail investors may buy into a rising market with a view of gaining exposure to silver before prices strengthen further. 
This could be possible only in the second half of CY 2020 when the ratio is expected to start falling. So I think that's quite telling and quite fascinating indeed. And again, a lot of this is psychological, what's happening now with the gold and silver ratio, but it is only, and this is what I've been saying for a while, that we're going to see that ratio tighten for one reason or another. One thing could cause it to tighten a little bit, but another thing could cause it to tighten a lot more, especially if demand for the physical coins, bars, and rounds increases. And so far, people are getting scared of silver because it has not performed like they thought it should. But keep in mind, remember 1991, on the verge of a recession, we saw that ratio get up or just after... You know, right? Yeah, that was right around the time the that one recession was in nineteen nine, late nineteen ninety, early ninety one. It got up to a hundred, and here we are again, and we may be getting close to a recession uh, for reasons that are not based off of U.S. policy, but because of geopolitics and because of um, um, what's going on with these Mexican cerveza flu and with oil um, now in Saudi Arabia. There's a lot of different factors. Black swans flying. Are we going to see a flock of swans come through? You know, we shall see. You know, the global economy is in trouble, and we'll see there. But that being said, I think with this high gold to silver ratio where it is now, um, pushing up to 100 to, to 1 now, to me, and with silver being relatively low, let's take a look at silver prices right now. Uh, they've dipped back. Uh, let's see here. Let's refresh this here. So we have silver now at $17.09. Still above that $17 level. Still up com in comparison to uh, the times before. It was in hot trading in the 15s and 16s. It's just a dull compared to gold. But in my mind, it's not a good time to sell your silver. I would hold on. Wait. Just wait and hold it for a while unless you actually absolutely have to. No reason to take a loss on it, and in my view, I'm, it's not a buyer's market for gold either, as high as it is, because we could test those $1,700 levels again. So it might be a good time to just hold fast for a while in your precious metal purchases. That's my thoughts anyway. Post your thoughts below. would like to extend a multitude of gratitude to you all for watching, and encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe. <laughs>